Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I have the first in a series of um, pick a cards that I'm going to be putting up for this month. We are going into Naughty Good November and today we're looking at what delicious surprises are coming to you in your love life, in the love department. For those of you who are actively pursuing um, or dating uh, or if you're thinking about it, what could possibly come about? Um, Please do remember that this is a general reading and not a personal reading, so there's no reason to take anything personally. If something doesn't resonate, just take what does, leave the rest. We have three groups from which you could choose from today. Group one, group two, and group three. If you are looking to get a personal reading, you can have, head over to my Patreon where I do them over there, okay? So um, go ahead and pause the video. Do whatever it takes to select which group is calling to you. Uh, and let's get All started. Right. For those of you who chose group one with the tiger's eye, this is going to be your reading. Let's see what comes up. What delicious surprises are coming to you this month? Uh, as I said in the beginning, this is a general reading, not a personal one. So there's no reason to take anything personally. If it doesn't resonate, take what does, leave the rest. Thank you. <laughs> okay, if you didn't catch my uh, community post where I talk about what a general reading is, I highly recommend you go check that out. Okay, so um, it's under the fall one, the happy fall. So we have our tarot and oracle. Let's go ahead and put this down and see what comes up. Oh my goodness. We have the Six of Pentacles. <laughs> we have the Nine of Cups. We have the King of Cups. Damn. And we have the Eight of Wands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have Venus with love influence here. We have a love influence, obviously. And we have Mercury. So Venus and Mercury. Very, very interesting. We have Maiden. We have Mystic. Okay, we have Let Me Cool Down Your Burning Fever. When I call, when I call you in, you better come. We have fantasizing, yearning for you. We have, I want to take my frustration out on that bootay, okay? <laughs> and we have Your Sex is My Ultimate High. All right, obviously there is, for those of you who are actively, um, engaged in dating or um, in a very amorous mood and you're out there putting yourself out there, um, there is a good chance you're definitely going to be attracting something. Somebody's coming in and they're coming in fast and hot. Like communication, we have Mercury and we have the Eight of Wands. It's like this is going to happen so fast, it's going to make your head spin, okay? Where there's going to be an intense attraction. This person is watching you. Okay, they're definitely checking you out. They're watching you and they have a, a, like a thing about your butt. They really love it. They love the way it looks. I mean, in both of these, he's like totally like checking it out. It's very exposed right here. You know, it's, it's even mentioned here in this card. But this person gets you so incredibly hot, it's not even funny. And we literally have Venus, you know. I think that the communication, the intellectual stimulation and the communication that comes through from this person as well is extremely hot. Like, they know how to talk a good game. Uh, and then they turn around and they follow through with it as well. I feel like that you're definitely into pleasuring this person. They love, like, and they're very vocal about letting you know, um, you know, how what they want to do to you, what, the, what, you know, they want you to do to them. And, you know, um, it's kind of interesting because we have fantasizing yearning for you. When I call you in, you better come. You know, I feel like this definitely, this, this, this whole relationship, it starts off, um, like, there's heavy communication. I feel like that there's like a brief meeting or something like this, and then it, it continues. Because maybe you guys are, you know, very busy um, and they're busy, like your schedules are a little bit different or you guys have a little bit of distance between you. So you can't see each other every single day. So what is happening here is there's a lot of like, you know, FaceTime calls and, um, you know, texting or sexting and stuff like this. And you guys are getting so riled up 
that it's like once you guys come together, it's like explosive, you know? Um, it's very passionate and um, intense because we have fantasizing yearning about you. When I call you in, you better come, you know? <laughs> it's like when it finally happens, it's really huh, like, bam, like really hot, really passionate. I mean, we have the King of Cups here. Okay, this person also is a mature individual um, with some heavy water sign influence. They definitely view you. I mean, because also, you know, it's very interesting. These are two archetypes for females. We have the maiden, which is a majority of women are the maiden archetype, and they will have a mixture with along with the maiden of another archetype. And for this case, it's the mystic. So we have the mystic and the maiden. You know, I feel like that they, that this is how they view you. You definitely come off as this. Um... You could definitely have an age difference as well. They could be the older one here. But with the love influence, it says strong att attraction and capacity for love. Putting a high priority on looks, passionate sex life. Absolutely passionate sex life. And there's they, they definitely like your looks. You like their looks. It's important to you both. Um, perhaps you are the type of people not only where you have to um, you know, be intellectually turned on by a person. You also have to be physically turned on, which believe me, I can understand that wholeheartedly because that's exactly how I am. But it's like, I don't care how beautiful a person is. It's like, if they're dumb as rocks, it's like, it's not a turn on. So I feel like you guys are kind of like that too, where it's like, you know, you have to have some brains behind the beauty or else forget it. Um, you know, it's just, it's not going to work because you need that intellectual conversation and stimulation to be really, um, aroused. So this talks about shared pleasure, high love compatibility. It's really intense. This is one of these kind of situations where it's like almost like love at first sight and it happens so fucking fast. It's just like, wow, you know, you can't, you can't even wrap your head around it. It's just, it comes on so strong and so quick, you know, and literally it says your sex is my ultimate high. That is how you guys are together. This is the kind of energy that is um, between you two, the ultimate high. And it's kind of funny. We have the nine of cups. The nine of cups is wish fulfillment. This is like, I, you're like floored because you can't believe you scored so, so good with this person. But also nine of cups can talk about, you know, literally feeling a little tipsy or feeling high or drinking too much even. So um, be careful with uh, overconsumption or, or like, and be careful with overconsumption of everything. Like this is one of these kind of situations where you guys are so wrapped up in each other. You can let responsibilities go on the wayside. It does happen. Okay. Um, many, many times, myself included, where it's like, you know, there are people out there who will get into a relationship. It's so intensely passionate that like, you will end up locked in a room together for a week straight. You know, um, it does happen. <laughs> um, and then you, you end up, uh, it, because you're, you're like on that, you're riding that love high. Um, you are high on life. You're high on love and it, it's the best drug ever. You know, that is what it is. So that's what I'm kind of feeling for this group. Hardcore communicating well with your partner, um, I really don't think that the next line has anything to do with this, but I'm going to say it anyway, for, just in case don't rationalize staying together if it's not working. Um, because sometimes when we have a mercury, con especially mercury conjunct the sun, sometimes, um, you will attract very, uh, mercurial types and definitely people who are younger and they could be more like alliances and not really like heavy duty, long-term love affairs, you know? Um, that could be the case, but it's like, I'm almost feeling like this is going to, this is going to be around a while. Um, but then it says falling in love fast. Exactly. That's another thing that this could mean. Okay. So, and I'm seeing that because look at, we have the, you know, the king of cups, the eight of wands, the nine of cups. Oh my God. You're going to be drunk and drunk on love so hard. Um, for some of you though, this may be a brief affair and then being attracted to intelligence or moving too quickly. Like literally you are going, this is, it's just like, you guys cannot help it though. It's that much of a physical attraction and a, you know, mental attraction that you just cannot help yourselves. It's just like that. Um, there is something quite mystical about this relationship. Um, it is really, really intensely powerful. 
Um, and I want to take my frustration out on that ass. You know, it's like literally, um, you, the, the sexual tension gets built up so hard that there is like a frustration. It's like, there's, there's a lot of, um, foreplay and teasing. Let me, let me cool down your burning fever. I feel like it's coming from both sides too. It's like, you guys really know how to push each other's erotic buttons and know how to rile one another up. So this is like, this is part of that, you know, um, being attracted to intelligence. It's like there's a lot of emotional intelligence here too. And with that comes understanding and then uh, understanding how, like you can read the other person really well too, I feel. Because uh, there's a lot of water energy here, okay? This person is definitely somebody who's going to have your back too, <laughs> literally and figuratively. Um, and they could even be somebody, like because we have that six of pentacles, this could be somebody... Um, Hmm. who is somebody who is even could even be like and not just a lover they kind of act like a mentor in your life too um but this could this often indicates like when it comes to career stuff people who are actors or they're you know entertainer jobs or they work in the entertainment industry um it can talk about people who do a lot of lecturing maybe they're like a professor even or something because i feel like this person's really smart and educated um this also, of course, this is always about charity work and stuff like this, but I don't think you're a charity case here, honey. Okay, <laughs> not at all. And then people who are like mortgage brokers and things like this who work in that kind of industry, I do have a sense that this person is well-established and they do have a decent bank account. <laughs> so um, that, and that's what's so good about, you know, it really bugs me because I think that a lot of people like, they talk shit about people who work hard and they have a lot of hustle and they actually gain a lot of material wealth. What's good about that is that when it comes to certain aspects of your life, when you know that you're covered and you know you're well taken care of and that you know that you have enough money in the bank, you don't have to stress about that. It's like the hierarchy of needs. When that is taken care of, you can relax and you can enjoy, you know, and you can take in all the pleasures of life, that Venus energy. So when somebody is like that and they work really hard to, you know, be comfortable or super wealthy, whatever, you know, I, this person is definitely comfortable and they're taken care of. So because they've they've invested well, they probably have investment properties, um, you know, they because of that it takes the pressure off. So and they're mature. They're not a child okay so it's like they definitely can they know how to enjoy the pleasures of life and they're going to you know take in the fruits of nature so to speak you know and really they can focus on love making because of this all right when people are constantly stressed about money it's very hard for people to relax and you know they're constantly that's in the back of their mind so honestly sex is gonna suck okay so um when people's needs are taken care of, and this is, you can study this, read about it, Google hierarchy of needs. Um, when the basic needs are taken care of and you're doing good, it's like you have time to enjoy intellectual pursuits, like in your spare time, you have time to, and go to, you know, enjoy, you know, the arts or whatever you, you, you make time for this too. Um, now just because you don't have like gazillions of dollars or something like this doesn't mean that you shouldn't enjoy the fruits of nature and, you know, really explore all the pleasures of life. You should, um, and you know, some pleasures of life, they don't cost anything. So keep that in mind too. This person understands that they know, you know, how to make the little things into quite pleasurable things too. They they are literally like fucking kind of like magical. This person, so um, being with them is going to literally fulfill a lot of wish uh, fulfillment fantasies, things like this. They they're going to and they're going to inspire you to be the best person you can be too, which is really kind of cool. So, anyways, guys, that is what I am seeing for this group. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss any of the other um, pick-a-cards I'm going to do this month in this series. Um, 
If you'd like to get a personal reading, head over to my Patreon. The link to that is in the drop-down box below. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, for those of you who chose group two with the highlight, this is going to be your reading. Let's go ahead and get into this. What spicy, delicious, wondrous things are coming your way in the love department? Let's see. Remember, this is a general reading, not a personal one, so there's no reason to take anything personally. Take what resonates and leave the rest. Thank you. Okay, so we have... Justice. We have the Will. Oh my God. We have the King of Swords. And we have the Ten of Pentacles. Damn. Luck is a changing for you guys. Shit. Okay. Hang on. We have Mars, Love Influence. Ooh, Throws of Passion. Absolutely. fucking lootly Look at that. We have the Fourth House, uh, Cancer's House, of course. We have Capricorn. We have Trickster. We have I Want You All to Myself. I tried to hide my lust for you. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> we have, just kidding, guys. We have teasing, bending over, slowly taking panties off. Again, we have trickster. We have teasing. We have a total tease here, okay? Daddy got a sweet tooth, mama. And we have only you can satisfy my depraved hunger. How very Capricorn. Anyway, so very, very interesting spread here. It looks like somebody... The wheel is turning in your favor, and it looks like there is something very karmic about this union. It's definitely a partnership, okay? And it is highly charged sexually, okay? This person is, it's kind of interesting because we have the King of Swords and then we have Capricorn. The King of Swords is somebody who's quite the professional, okay? And, um, you know, they, they could even be a business owner of some type, okay? They're very business Business is business, pleasure is pleasure, okay? Um, they're super serious about, you know, what they do for a living and stuff, but behind closed doors, they become unleashed, unhinged, and they are quite down, dank, and dirty, okay, when it comes down to it. They love to tease. They love to play, you know, they, like, will needle you, you know what I mean? They'll, they'll, poke fun sometimes and like get you riled up or whatever. They love to see you like um, start to get frustrated and then they start laughing and they'll, they, I mean, this is going to sound weird, but they might even be tickling you sometimes. Um, it's, it's that kind of a vibe I'm getting. It's like, they are so like a completely different person. Like when they're, you know, doing their job, being professional or whatever, they come off a certain way, but once the door is shut, it's like, holy crap, who are you? <laughs> You know, there's a lot of uh, expansion. Um, being with this person is going to bring a whole lot more. I feel like your libido is going to be uber charged here. Um, they definitely are very, like, uh, they're, they're set, okay? Because this is the Ten of Pentacles. They could even come from a family with long-standing traditions, which is why they come off this way. You know what I mean? They were taught a certain way. Maybe they're a part of the family business or something. So they have to maintain a certain, uh, you know, image um, when they're out with other people or they're out and about in, in public and stuff like this. Absolutely, because the Ten of, Ten of Pentacles is um, family business stuff. It is also people who are property investors, um... Even people who do a lot of like they like they they're um there's a lot of sales going on with this person you know um but I feel like this is more like you know family business maybe they have like a lot of properties uh, this also can indicate people who are insurance brokers um, and then also people who maintain a passive income or they are just straight up retired but i feel like yeah through property investment they have like kind of like a passive income that comes in because of it and i mean they're just like set for life all right if you score this one you are a one lucky biatch because they they're they're good to go you know when it comes to that because they've worked really hard and um i feel like a lot of people have this assumption 
that just because somebody comes from a a family of wealth or you know they've built a you know a lot of wealth uh they have like a huge investment pro, uh, portfolio or something like this that somehow they didn't have to work for any of it that's just not true for a lot of people okay for the people who've like especially families who have worked really hard to gain a lot of wealth they make their kids not all of them unfortunately though Ugh. Um, but the, the ones that actually make their kids go and they have to get an education, they have to make their own bread and butter and stuff like this. And um, if they expect to take in a position within the family business, they have to earn that shit. They're just not going to get handed stuff. Um, they have to actually have the skills and know what the F they're doing. So, yes, there are those privileged little pampered shitheads out there who haven't lifted a finger in their whole life and they're not even living in reality because they've never had to work for anything in their life. But this person is not like that. And because of this, um, they are very cautious like with who they get into relationships with. Capricorn males are notorious for this. They are they are very, very they take it slow and they get to know the person for a while before they like you have to be an asset. It's kind of like the wealth portfolio. This person has got to be an asset. Like they have to, um, what are they bringing to the table? They're concerned about that. They, they want to know, are you going to make me look good professionally? Or are you going to freaking fuck it all up? You know, this is, they, they are concerned about this. Um, they're also quite kinky. So um, they're like one of the most kinky zodiac signs. Everyone thinks it's Scorpio, but it's not, okay? Um, that's just the truth. Scorpios are either like great with sex and very open with it and, you know, very sexually charged or else they're frigid bitches. And that is the fact. Um, there's no in between. It's always extreme with Scorpio. Capricorn is cautious. They're, you know logical a lot of the times when it comes to certain stuff i'm talking about the ones who like hustle and then aren't lazy pieces of crap okay every there there's you know it takes all kinds okay but i'm talking about the ones like um that are like the the, the very professional ones who really work that energy where this particular energy that 10th house energy comes radiating through that is what this is this person is they're a lot of fun you know, um, they're very romantic. Um, and it's really kind of hard, like when you're around this person, because they, they definitely, you're so sexually attracted to each other that it's hard for you to even control yourself when you're around them. Because I want you all to myself. I try to hide my lust for you. And it's very difficult because they are very alluring, very charming, very sexy. Think about it. Capricorn. The tarot card for Capricorn is the devil. The devil is sexy, you know, they're very sensuous, intense creativity, intense passion, you know, um, they don't mess around, okay, seriously, when it comes to, when they're serious, they're serious, they're not fucking around, they're not joking about it, okay, Mars influence, throws of passion, ambitious partner, fearless in love, Achieving relationship goals, expressing your desire. And you are definitely going to be ex like this person brings that out in you where you're going to be expressing your desire for one another like completely. I mean, look at that. It's so passionate. Um, and, you know, they are a charmer. And it says reigning for also reigning in your anger, intense sex. Yes. Being hotly pursued and power struggles. So there could be a little bit of that as well too. Um, you know, and and for those of you who think that there's no relationship without complications and that you don't come up into some hiccups or some bumps along the road that you never get into an argument, good luck to you in life because let me tell you, <laughs> when you're with somebody in a relationship for a long period of time, you're going to get into arguments, you're going to get into fights. That's just life. It's how you get through them and how you get over the obstacles that matters. Okay. As someone who's been in a real, you know, married for 28 years, over 28 years, I can attest to this. Okay. It's not always going to be pretty. It's not always going to be happy sunshine. You can be what the point is with the relationship is you want to be content. You cannot be happy 24 seven. That is toxic. People who believe that are fooling themselves. You can be content and be very satisfied with your life. And when you are, 
you know, you, you become happy, sure. But then when you hit a rock, a bump in the road or something, and it gets, you get depressed or you get sad or you get upset because you're content, you're able to come out of that and you're able to overcome the obstacle. And when you do, you are stronger for it. Okay. And as a couple, if you work together, then, um, you can get through anything. Okay. Mars. <laughs> Mars is very ambitious, very powerful, very passionate. I have this feeling that when you guys get into an argument, it's going to be juicy and it's going to be gnarly. But because there's that intense love, that cancer, that nurturing, that compassion, you will get through it. Okay. Also, it says meet through family. Look at that. This is the family card right here. Um, you know, strong family traditions. Um, it's not the Ten of Cups, the happy family card, but it is a family card, okay, with the Ten of Pentacles. Um, meet through family, online dating, or near your home. This is how you guys meet. Start a family, secure home, secure home life, and attractive spouse. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay. And lucky marriage, happiness and love, feel truly loved. Exactly. This is like a good one. Okay. There's going to be some power struggles sometimes. There's, it's going to be massively passionate, but this is like passionate love. There is true love. You will feel happiness with this person. It is very content. You are very lucky to, to nail this person. Okay. And like, literally they are very fun. They're not boring. You know, um, they, they, they're funny. They have a good, good sense of humor. And literally only you can satisfy my depraved hunger. Daddy got a sweet tooth, mama. Exactly. They're, they're, they're totally sweet on you and very, um, into it. Um, super again, Mars is libido and there's a lot of passion there. So, um, and we're dealing with a lot of cancer. Like the, the family is very important. Starting a family and having a happy family is very important to this person. Um, so, you know, it's like the, you have to have a sense of humor too. That's another thing. People who have a stick up their ass 24 seven, again, good luck in life. Um, you gotta be able to laugh. You have to be able to smile. You have to be able to, when shit hits the fan, be able to pull yourself out of it. And you have to be able to laugh at your own mistakes and also accept responsibility for your actions. If you cannot do that, you're going to always run into fucking difficulties in life, period. But this, this is a good, this is a good one right here. This is a keeper. So enjoy. So that's it. That's all I have for this reading. Uh, please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss the other ones in this series. If you'd like to get a personal reading, you can head over to my Patreon. The link is in the drop down box below. Thank you guys for being with me and I'll catch you next time for group three. With the, um, oh gosh, I can't think of the name of this right now. <laughs> Brain fart, sorry guys. <laughs> Unakite, there we go. That is what this is. Uh, this is your reading. Let's see uh, what delicious surprises are in store. Please do remember, as I said at the beginning of this video, this is a general reading. It is not a personal one. So if something doesn't resonate, there's no reason to take it personally. Just take what does, leave the rest. If you want a personal reading, then head over to my Patreon. That's where I do them. So <laughs> anyways, here we go. We have the Hermit. We have Virgo energy. We have the Tower, Mars energy. We have the Page of Pentacles. And we, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. We have the King of Wands. We have the First House with Love, with Aries energy. We have Pluto, love influence. We Oh, wow. We have CEO. Wow. We have Aries and we have CEO and we have the King of Wands, which is a fire sign, of course. Very interesting that this is coming up because Aries in tarot is the emperor. So, yeah, he's a hottie. We have Wizard. Oh, ho, ho, ho. hello, the Wizard of Wall Street. Okay, we have... Your love opened me up and healed me again. We have no one else does it for me. I'd rather be alone. In other words, you'd rather be alone than be without this person and vice versa. We have hopeless romantic. We have 
I've had broken fantasies, but you brought them back to life. Wow. Oh my God. Okay, hold on. Let me make room for all these. And then finally, we have set the mood with candles, music, wine, and hot oils. Again, we have hopeless romantic. There's a lot of romance here within this group, okay? This is like one of these ride or die kind of things. Again, we're dealing with Pluto energy. So, of course, Pluto goes to extremes. Pluto is transformative. Pluto is death and rebirth, okay? Pluto is wealth, okay? He's the god of wealth, all right? Straight up. So, um, but it's like no one, else, uh, no one else does it for me. I'd rather be alone. That is so Pluto. That is so like, you know, that kind of an energy, all right? Where it's like, it's, it's ride or die, you know? It's like, I'm either like a total sex machine or I'm a cold, frigid person or I'm a nun. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, it's, it's definitely going to those extremes, all right? Where it's, that is, that's just Pluto's thing. That is definitely a Scorpio thing too. Uh, however, all right, we have wizard and we have CEO. This person's great with wealth and great with money. And they definitely make an out outstanding presence. When they walk into a room, they're incredibly sexy. They're very desired by a lot of people because that is the king of wands. The king of wands is often referred to as sex on legs. You know, it's like he is extremely charming, very theatrical. Um, he's very wanted, okay, like desired. So he's, he's a sexy bitch. Um, so that's like the vibes I'm getting off this. Now, what's interesting is we have the Virgo energy, okay? Virgo is the sixth house, and it has to do with your everyday work, you know, your everyday work, your everyday schedule, your everyday job, your everyday routine, health and fitness as well. Um, this could even be how you guys meet. But the point is with this, when you meet this person, it's good, they're going to shake you to your core, okay? And it's going to feel very spiritual, like this connection. And it's going to be kind of like a slow burn because um, whenever we're doing that, and it's also something you've never experienced before. Okay, what's kind of interesting is this is CEO and then this is the page of pentacles. In like a career reading, this could be the end, the beginning of a new learning curve. This could be a promotion. You just got promoted. Um, this could be a student, someone who just, you know, you know, went into university or they're going into a PhD program or something like this, right? Um, this could even be like how you meet, okay? But the, the point is we have Mars energy, this person, and then we have Aries, you know, being mentioned right here, which of course rules, Mars rules Aries. So it's very passionate. This person is very passionate. They're very ambitious. They're a fucking go-getter, hardcore. So now what's really interesting with this is it says meet while leading events, going out alone and adventures. So that could like literally um, have something to do with career or like, you know, studies, even like what these things are, you know, having to deal with going out alone, like especially for those of you who are content with your life and you feel good in your own skin and you can go out alone. It's, it's kind of fun to do that sometimes. Okay. Like right before I met my husband, this is how I was. I was totally just cool. Just being in my own skin and just being me. And it was just like, I would go out and I would go to, um, clubs even by myself. Most of the time I would do that anyway, because it was like, I know I was going to run into somebody I knew there anyway. So it was just like, it was like, I didn't need anybody. I was good on my own. I could just go do it. You know, I'd go grab food for myself and sit there and enjoy it. You know, um, there's nothing wrong with doing that. And when you could feel good and comfortable and sometimes you just want to be alone, <laughs> you know, it's like, you, you don't want to be around other, you know, pe you, you know, like I have to like communicate with anyone you just want to sit and be and maybe just absorb the atmosphere or something that is always um fun too but i feel like this that this group is quite independent by the time that this comes around for those of you who are strongly independent and you're like into studies or something you can even be someplace like enjoying a meal or something and working on studying when you come across this person maybe they're even there by themselves too and you guys kind of like make eye contact and it's like this is how it begins you know um we have self-focused partner, magnetic attraction, and mirror. See, there's something, you guys mirror each other. There's something very special about this relationship where there's a lot of growth. Um, you guys definitely have like a karmic contract or something that you're supposed to fulfill in this lifetime. Um, we also have possessive, loyal, and soulmate. There it is. Boom, soulmate. That's it right there. We have Pluto influence with faded love. Exploring your sexuality, pleasure in pain. Oh, so we're kinky here. Yes. <laughs>
fake me daddy anyway um so we have uh pleasure and pain intense connection secrets brought to light we also have relationship ending new love releasing your ex hidden desires and starting over this is what is happening at the time of this meeting that's why there's the tower moment probably for some of you you could even be breaking up with a virgo or you already have or you're like i'm done you know with that and then this you know when you're finally feeling good and you're finally feeling content and comfortable in your own skin, you're just doing your own thing and just enjoying life, boom, here it comes. Here comes Mr. Pluto, um, you know, Mr. Wizard here. And this person is quite the hopeless romantic. They are fucking charming. And like, I've had broken fantasies, but you brought them back to life. This could even be like what they're doing too. Like you guys have similar story. Again, it's a mirror. You guys have like gone through some breakups or something bad has happened and you guys have similar stories and you kind of bond over it. You know, there's definitely a spiritual bond here. Okay. Um, and maybe they thought, and you thought that you'd never meet anybody ever again. And you just kind of have given up on this or whatever, but then here it comes, especially, and remember, unless you're going out and unless you're being like in public or you're being seen and you're like smiling at people, making eye contact with people and stuff like this, don't expect anything to happen. Okay. It's, it's like, if you're just at home and you know, you don't ever take any action, nothing's going to change in your life. Okay. We have Mars here. We have Aries here. We have Pluto here. This is all about moving and hustling your ass. This is about putting yourself out there. This is about taking charge and being fearless. You know, it's it's not that like somebody who's courageous isn't scared. They're just, they just suck it up and they go for it because if they want any change in their life, they're going to have to swallow it back and just do the damn thing. That's what courage is. Okay. Um, so we have set the mood with candles, wine, hot. This person is so sweet and just like really top notch. Seriously. Okay. This is one of these kind of things where and they're not going to rush and neither are you. This is going to build over time. And it's like, once you meet this person, it's like, you're kind of like, you know, this is it. This is what I want right here. And you know, it says, your love opened me up and healed me again. No one else does it for me. I'd rather be alone. I feel like this has to do with what happened before. Like no one else does it for me. Like literally you or them or both. Because again, we're dealing with mirror. Um, like believed that you're never going to find somebody again. I'm just going to give up or whatever. But you, you still like in the back of your mind, you're like, no, I'm still going to go out. I'm still going to enjoy my life. I'm still going to have fun. I'm still going to be friendly. I'm still going to be nice. You know, I'm going to, you know, if somebody's looking at me and I find them attractive, I'm going to say hello. I'm going to wave or I'm going to talk to them or whatever. Um, you know, because, if it, I feel like it's kind of like one of these things where you're thinking, well, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. If not, it won't be, period. And that, you know what? That's honestly kind of like a good way to come at it. Um, because what's meant for you will be for you, period. All right. But in order to get that thing, you got to, you know, be active. So keep that in mind. All right. Uh, you can't just give up and you can't whine about it and like make excuses. Um, we must take responsibility for our actions. Okay. And we are the ones who control our lives. We are the ones who, um, you know, our thoughts and our actions form our reality. So if you're constantly wallowing in the negativity and thinking, oh, I'll never this and I'll never that, then you never will. Okay. By getting out there and doing the damn thing, you won't regret it. Okay. Ser oh, come on. Score. <laughs> you know, hopeless, romantic, totally freaking awesome, sweet, like passionate and you know what's interesting about the king of wands here is this kind of energy is someone who is most definitely going to like they might be flirty they might be charming they might be cute and they know how to like socialize with other people and stuff like this but at the end of the day if they're into you they're into you and it's just going to be you okay speaking of someone who's had much experience with fire sign men i can tell you this is true okay if they're into you, they're not going anywhere. They're not screwing around behind your back and they're not doing any of that, okay? They're devoted and that's the good part of this, most definitely. They are, when they've made up their mind, they're stubborn asses. So um, yeah, <laughs> that's where it goes, okay? So very interesting. Obviously, there's some good, good stuff, lots of 
exciting adventures coming your way. Um, have fun, enjoy your life, be content, and all that good stuff, you guys, because it's magic is in the air. We got a, you know, a wizard with freaking wealth and their job and they're, they're good at what they do. Okay. Wizard in the bedroom too. And wizard with romance. So, all right, guys, that's it. That's all I have for this reading. Make sure to like, subscribe so you do not miss the rest of the videos in this series this month. Uh, if you do want to get a personal reading, you can head over to my Patreon. The links to that is in the drop down box. Thank you with, for being with me today and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.